Welcome to my vid. Vid number one. I've been doing plumbing now for nigh on 20 years on and off and I've done an awful lot of these compression joints. Generally they're very good. Generally you get very little trouble. I'm sure you know how to use them but just as a recap. The taper in fitting, pipe going in there, an olive of copper or brass, corresponding taper in the nut, tighten it up, the nut crushes the um, or compresses I suppose more accurate, the olive down on the pipe makes a connection, fine, very good, generally. There is however two major problems I've found over all these years. First of all the space, and there generally isn't very much. These pipes by definition are in awkward places. Back of cupboards, behind basins, underneath loos, boxed in, generally very very tight, very very awkward to get at. You may have two pipes as close together as that, or right in the corner with a wall here. They're generally put out of the way, so very awkward to get at. The other major problem is, as you can see with these, is that all the nuts, well, the vast majority of the nuts, are different sizes. From that to that is well over a millimeter. You can plainly see the difference between those two, I hope. So therefore that means if they're all different sizes, if you just use a, a fixed jaw spanner like this, they're not going to fit very many, very few. It fits that one nicely, but a virtually identical Kernix, it won't fit at all. To get it to fit that, it'll be loose on there. It fits this one nicely, I hope. Yep. That one, it's very loose. Put any force on it, it'll just turn the points. Same with all these. This remarkable little rig here as sizes from there to I believe that is the biggest one 22.5 there 24.1 23.8 22.9 9.2 millimeter difference between the biggest and the smallest so that is very restricted use of fixed power so next some people use these water pump. It has its uses. Obviously it's adjustable but it does rely on having room to swing it and a good grip otherwise it will just turn. And sometimes you just haven't got the room. It's also rather long. The mold grip is another useful tool but it's rather large. It's very clumsy. Again obviously you can adjust to whatever size disadvantage I've found of the mole it's when you tighten it up and there's a say a wall here it tightens up against the wall you have to undo it again in order to release <coughs> tricky so it's very useful has its uh, benefits but it's a bit of a clumsy thing I have another slightly bizarre thing here it's I bought because I thought it was a locking wrench it has a lock on it Unfortunately, it only locks when it's shut. Again, it adjusts its size to various dimensions, ultra fashion. So theoretically good, but again, it's clumsy, it's big, and it relies on a good grip. And having room to have a good grip, else it will again turn. Good idea, but no coconut. So you're back with the old adjustable, the Bodger Spanner. This is probably the most versatile of the lot, but it has the disadvantages in the fact that the jaw gets slack after use. It means it shuts on itself. What I've found is, in, especially with these square ones, square, i.e. not Koenigs, this flat here has a slight concave surface. It must be something to do with the way it's made. So when you actually put the spanner on and do it up tightly, tight enough to, uh, so it won't slip, 
when you try and take it off it tends to stick it's okay here but if it's up under a basin where you can't see it that is very awkward and of course next time you try and get it on the next flat it sticks you have to undo it fiddle around looking for the next flat get it on do it up it's one of the most versatile but it has its limitations and I say it can be very awkward to use I mean this is fine do up undo if you have it round the other way so is the adjustment the other way tricky so one of my favorites used to be this little one same advantages not as slack shorter handle getting tighter places has the same disadvantages let's take a different one put it on there and it sticks so it won't go on the next one until you really push it and it's a straight line which of course you often have not got it's a bit thick it's a bit short other than that a useful thing you have a few more bizarre tools this one which I don't really know the name of to be honest theoretically it'll fit any size what I've found is it simply is not strong enough that is too short for the length so when you try and turn it it just literally opens up and turns on the nut if you put any force on it it just opens up unfortunately it could be useful and finally this bizarre device virtually guaranteed not to fit anything I yet actually to find a nut that will fit this with any sort of accuracy not to mention if you did you can imagine you've got virtually no chance of using that in a tight situation a useless thing well, it must have its uses, but I've never found one as yet. So I started thinking there must be a better way. There must be a way of making something they could use in most of the situations that was compact and easy. And eventually I came up with these. These are the prototypes. My trial and error. That's trial and that's error. Now it could be the other way around. After trying to break these, which I managed with this one, I managed to bend it under extreme stress. Eventually, I came up with the final prototype 8, which is this one. By the way, the colour is not relevant. I just use it that because I, so I can find it. I won't go into any great points now. That'll be on video 2. Suffice it to say, that it fits them all snugly, securely, we'll drive them, no problem. The beaver wrench. If you're interested, I'll see you in video two. Thank you.